Mr. Posa with his final instructions. 12 three minute rounds. Okay, lads, I spoke to you both in the dressing room. You both know what I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told, and both you watch the edge. Good luck to you both, touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Careers at world level on the line. For the winner, a world title shot. For the loser, nowhere to go. So Come much on, at one. stake. Line one. And here we go. And if you're watching Amir Khan on ringside last week, you might have heard him talking about this fight. He didn't want to put his neck on the line too much, but he did say he favoured McCloskey, but he's going to have to be clever. He's going to have to make him move. He's going to have to work his jab. He's going to have to draw him in, make him miss, use the lateral movement that he's got, frustrate him, and just slowly wear him down. If he can do that, then McCloskey's got every chance here. One of the worries I've got for McCloskey is his defence carries the hands very low, relies on reflexes, and that's dangerous against a, a puncher who's very long, very tall, like Prescott. And Prescott, who was outboxed by Kevin Mitchell, and that is the blueprint, as we've said, for everybody that faces him, but Prescott said he was dead at the weight. He looks pretty good at this high weight, he's in terrific physical condition. Expect it to be a little bit cagey and careful. Certainly from McCloskey. The last thing McCloskey wants to do is get drawn into a war. He's a tricky southpaw. He's very good at making people look very ordinary because he takes a right hand there and then a combination to the body and then starts to make his man miss. And that's what he's got to do. Another right hand lands against the jaw of McCloskey. At the moment, he's getting through Prescott. And I like to see them hands go up a little bit from McCloskey. The body Another punches of body shots, look yeah. very powerful as well, don't they? Yeah, Prescott might have missed with two or three, but he's landed as well. And that's a very, very encouraging start for the Colombian. Two or three right hands have landed to the jaw, and he's landed a couple of decent combinations to the body as well. Well, he's got the right punches against the south boy. He's got the left hook and the long right hand. So... He's looking to keep the right hand straight and then bring the left hook behind that Prescott. That's good tactics. And what everybody has said, the one thing that the Irishman must not do is allow the emotion of the night to overwhelm him and to get drawn into something silly. You start mixing it up with this fella, there's a chance you're going to come second. Well, McCloskey avoided Amir Khan's punches for quite a while before that cut. So he showed good speed and Khan very, very quick. That's a push. Oh no! How fast is ruling that a knockdown? Well, well. Well, he didn't need that. He did catch him on the side of the head, and he was a little bit off balance. Well, we need to take another look at that. It did look like a pushdown, but maybe there was a punch in there as well. Uh, John Breen saying straight away, forget about it. But that is not the start that he needed. He was getting picked up anyway, but this knockdown, not what he needed at all. Now, was there a punch in there as well? Yeah, caught him around the, the side of the, the head. Ooh. Definitely the, the arm sort of rocked him. It just seemed to go a little bit past his head, but the, the inside of the arm seemed to knock him down. I think he's a bit lucky here to get a knockdown, Prescott, because, as you say, it's the, it's, it's the inside of the forearm that's twisted it the is. head around. But that would have still taken something out and shook him up a little bit, but he's surprised. He knew he wasn't caught with a proper shot. He shows there, but he got there. So that's probably a 10-8 for Prescott. On Howard Foster's card. Sorry, on the judge's card. Well, the only good thing about that for McCloskey, and there's not much good about having a knockdown scored against you, is that it's come so early that he can slowly erase that 10 8. 
but he's got to get back into this fight and he mustn't allow himself to get carried away by what's happening John Breen that's a very good advice there just said forget about it put it to the back of your mind and stick with the game plan because if he starts thinking he's got to chase this fight then that's playing to Prescott straight now it's very very early he's just got to settle down but caught again with that so long right hand he's finding those right hands he's got some good range finders early here Prescott and all that head movement that you hear about from McCloskey, not seeing it at the moment. Another combination to the body, sinking in. This is really smart, intelligent boxing from Prescott right now. Yeah, he's not giving anything away. He's keeping it long, using the jab well, and then bringing in that very sharp right hand. He's so tall, so long with those punches. That's where McCloskey is finding it hard. Walks into a straight left, and there's blood around the nose and mouth for McCloskey. Prescott caught him as he was coming in and there's some kind of damage there that doesn't look too clever it's a straight shot it was a hurtful shot and just about everything that could go wrong is going wrong for McCloskey in these first two rounds and again the big bombs fizzing around the side of the head of the Irishman Bleeding very heavily that nose, isn't it? There could be some damage there. Rutkowski's trying to pick it up, but he's running into more punches from Prescott, who's keeping it cool, picking his shots, not wasting anything. I tell you, it's a very disciplined effort, this. That one a little bit low, Howard Foster having a word, but it's, it's more disciplined from Prescott. It's what we've seen in his last few fights, that he's happy just to control affairs, that he's built up a little three-fight winning streak after losing to Kevin Mitchell but he's happy to do it with boxing he wants to be known for his boxing not just the big bomb and that's what we're seeing tonight he's putting on a very very skilled little masterclass here oh, that's better, better much better from McCloskey yeah the left hand trying to pick it up trying to force it a little bit but he walks so up with another right, right. yeah and from your own experience Glenn you, you get a nosebleed like that, especially this early, does that affect your breathing? Well, you know, the referee counted in the first round as having a knockdown, so he wants to pick it up, and now he's got a bad nosebleed, so he's feeling it's going wrong for him, McCloskey, so now, you know, as well as the breathing being affected, he needs to pick it up, he needs to try and show something, take the play away, and that's where he's running on to more. Well, it's not been a total disaster for McCloskey, but it's not been good. He walked on to a big right hand, and that's what opened up the uh, the nosebleed, I think. And that's a very sharp, straight, stiff right hand. Defense is good from Prescott. Straight back, he brings that right hand. And I'm sure the money's been piling in on Prescott after that opening two sessions. Klosky with it all to do here. Uh, look at that. You'd have got six to four at the start on Prescott, not anymore. And McCloskey's drifted right out. Another one of those big right hands comes in. And McCloskey felt it. And we're not seeing the McCloskey that we saw against Khan, where McCloskey was making him miss so regularly. Khan missed with an awful lot of punches. That movement just not been there in this one. Yeah, Khan hasn't got this height and reach. Remember, this is also the man that knocked Damir Khan out in, in the first round. And he's only lost two fights, Kevin Mitchell and the Miguel Vasquez, who's now the IBF lightweight champion, so the form's not bad, not bad at all. And he had Vasquez down on the floor in that one early. A yeah. flash knockdown from a, a straight left jab. But as you say, Vasquez got off the floor to win that. Only by a split decision there. Yeah. Although a lot of people are inside, thought that might have been a bit uh, generous towards Prescott. But nevertheless, when he loses, it's to really good opponents. And I tell you what, that nose of McCloskey's is a mess. And he gets caught with a little clubbing left hand. That's a little bit better from him, though. Left hook to the body from Prescott. And McCloskey eating the jab there, isn't he? That's not good. 
He's in a bit of disarray, Monkowski doesn't know what to do, anything he tries, Prescott has the answer. And the blood literally just dripping from that nose. That is bad. Well, Prescott came in and predicted that he would finish this early. Right now, you think, for Prescott to have any chance, he's got to think in terms of getting a stoppage inside the distance. McCloskey tries the left hand to the body, trying to do something a little bit different. Push Prescott back, chase him down a little bit. You're just not seeing McCloskey outboxing this fellow at the moment. Prescott picking off those right-hand jabs. A right hand, a left to the body got through, that was a good shot from McCloskey. And he, he's taking the initiative a bit more in this round, which he has to do. And he's Prescott backing up a little bit here. Yeah, he's forced him back, taking the play away, but he's still eating the jabs and eating punches from long range, and Prescott's still doing a little bit more of the scoring work. Just managed to slip inside that right hand on the bell. That was lucky for, for McCloskey. Well, they've really got to go to work on that nose of Paul McCloskey. It's a mess. And punches like that, that big straight right hand, are not going to help. Yeah, he just doesn't go to the defence. He goes those punches, trying to get the initiative back, though, towards the end of the round, McCloskey, but... For me, you know, maybe he just with a good word, the end shared the round, but Prescott boxing well, and this is looking tough. Well, he really has to try and just keep this initiative, but he was starting to just build up a little bit of momentum as that round went on and every so often as we saw still taking those big punches that right hand getting through that's better and of course every time he does land a punch the pace goes crazy he threw a combination there that missed and still they cheered been working very hard on that nose and he seems to have stemmed the flow of blood although Prescott hasn't put a right hand on it yet got through and a right jab coming in from the Irishman and just went in with a left lead there clever stuff from the Irishman and just picking him up a little bit here in this round, McCloskey. Yeah, he's building in a bit of confidence, he's letting that left hand go. He's got Prescott just thinking a little bit, and when he's thinking, he's not throwing that right hand back at McCloskey. Well, as Johnny Nelson was saying earlier, so many of Prescott's stoppages come really early. If he doesn't put you away early, historically, he does tend to tire a little bit. And he hasn't managed to put this fellow away very early. Is that a good sign for McCloskey? And Prescott was landing those combinations to the body. Haven't seen a body shot going for a while from the Colombian. But what he's doing now, McCloskey, is he's trying to beat Prescott to the punch. And that's what Kevin Mitchell did so well when he beat him. Did it again there. Good left hand. And he's looking a little bit confused here, Prescott. And certainly being out hustled. And these fans sense it, but maybe the tide is turning after that terrible start. Yeah, much better, he's up the tempo, he's starting to avoid the jab, he's starting to get the rhythm a little bit. McCloskey getting a little bounce in his step now, seeing the punches coming at him, and he's coming back much better, doing the better work in this round. And there's a bit of confidence there, a bit of bounce, a bit of spring in the step, almost a half grin earlier, as he made Prescott miss. And Prescott has not landed much in this round at all. Clever, clever work from Paul McCloskey. He's right back in this thing. 
A fast start for Brady's Prescott. Well, where's this fella been the last couple of rounds? We've got plenty to think about now. Well, that was a good left hand landing from McCloskey, who's changed the pace up the tempo. He's beating Prescott to the punch now. He's just walking him down a little bit. Prescott being made to think. Round five of what's been a fascinating WBA light welterweight title eliminator, Bradis Prescott, with the fast start of Paul McCloskey in the blue, starting to really come into this. Right hand lands from Prescott, that's always a danger. Well, he's certainly repaired some of the damage, but this is a positive start to this fifth round from the Colombian. Right hand landed, a couple of left jabs have landed and the, the nose has opened up again. Well, I think looking at what's happened so far, it's important. If, if Prescott's going to win, he's going to try and get center ring and keep McCloskey on the back foot. McCloskey, similar thing, he's going to try and push Prescott back. Who's going to get the authority in the center of that ring? That, that really is key. A bit of a change attack here from Prescott. He's working that left jab. And that's a that's a weapon. And McCloskey's walking onto some of these. Good little left to the body. But he's jabbing well here, Prescott. And it's that jab that put Vasquez on the floor. And the left gets through and a little dip at the knees there, perhaps, from Prescott. Not sure if he felt that one or not. No, I think he was just bracing himself to, for the punch coming. Well, he's fainting quite a bit, he's, he's showing work, but he's not doing it, McCloskey. He needs to do a little bit more. With Prescott so far, that's worked better with the jab and the straight right. McCloskey threatening. But out of range again. Um, Prescott complaining about something. Oh, he's allowing his concentration to wander. And he tried to put a left to the body there. I think Prescott managed to get the elbow down to block it off. It's a real tactical battle, this. Quite a chess match going on in there. And another left jab comes in. And again, a left comes in from McCloskey, but it's picked up on the glove. That one got through. But as time goes on, Prescott gives ground more and more, and that suits McCloskey. He likes coming forward. Out of range again, McCloskey. And get, getting caught as he came in there. It's not been a dominant round for Prescott. He, he couldn't say that, but he, he steadied the ship after a really good round for McCloskey. Yeah, I think he's done a bit more in that round than McCloskey. McCloskey threatened, but not enough work. Something strong, that's good as work. That's good as work on the floor. Don't you really single points as well, you need to take out. Take out, just take out. John Breen, Eamon McGee, going to work. Come on, Breen, Breen, what are you doing with? Oh, me, left hand, oh, left hand, left hand, put his top on the ground. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Six. Round six. This was the round that Bradis Prescott predicted that he would not pull McCloskey out. Let's see if he can make good on that boast. A couple of times in that last round, though, Glenn, Prescott was complaining about something. I couldn't see what, but that's never a good sign either. Yeah, he caught his foot on the advertising hoarding, and I think he, he complained about that. It was, nothing, it was nothing too big that he was worried about. What odds you'd get on a knockout here? As McCloskey, as bad a start as he made, and as bad as that nose is, he's taken some solid shots from Prescott and taken them well.
Klutsky, you can hear by the corner, they want more from him, he needs to throw more punches, needs to land one more. He comes forward, he threatens that he's going to do it, but he's not letting the punches go. And then Prescott gets through a one or two like that. He's having trouble with this Prescott jab. I'm sure there's a few that would, Nick. It's, yeah, it's very long. It it's really very is solid. And he's keeping him at range, and then he does walk in, and he gets tagged with it. And he's got to step in to let those left hands go. And there's going to be some collateral damage when he does it. Nice little quick counter left, but needs something behind that single shot from McCloskey. Nice little right hand. Drew Press got in and really caught him with a solid right. But then this badly, and he can't afford that. And then Prescott getting a little bit ragged as well. We expected Prescott to miss a few because that's McCloskey's game, but oh, he didn't miss that one. A big right hand's wobbled him. He was shaken to his boots by that one. Yeah, certainly felt the power, and now. Don't drop your hands, that's not the thing to do, There's a especially if you're hurt. There's bravado going on in there, he's saying, I'm not hurt, you didn't hurt me, but we saw the legs shake. And another right hand staggers him. And those hands are dangerously low. And Prescott senses that that boast of his, that sixth round knockout, could be coming true. But those knees look stiffened, didn't they? I think he's just about going to get through the round. But that was a wicked right hand from Brady's Prescott. It really staggered the Irishman. And these last two rounds have not been good for him. He was out jabbed in round five, and then the big punch in round six. There it is, big right hand. And then he made a silly mistake of dropping his hands straight after that. Caught with a smashing right hand from Prescott. Another right hand straight through the middle. You see the legs stiffen. Bravado. But silliness as well. Hands up. Well, they've got real concerns in this corner as we go into the second half of this fight. And it was really the adjustment that was made in the Prescott corner that was significant after McCloskey was looking to get right back into this after round four. Prescott just jabbed away in round five. And opened him up a little bit in round six. So how's it looking as we go into the second half of this one. Yeah, I've got him four points ahead. Prescott, and there's a few good judges around me, got it similar to that. So, McCloskey all to do. Been on the floor, well, the corner virtually, maybe, but he's been hurt a couple of times. Nose badly damaged, it's not going well. Kloski drops his hands and stares as if to say, you can't hurt me. But he's not moving a whole lot now, and that's a key feature of his game, and he gets another big right hand as well. And you just get the sense that the Irishman is starting to wear down a little bit here. Starting to become flat-footed, not getting out of the way of punches. It's Prescott on the front foot now, looking confident. And you can feel the anxiety around this arena as well. They know what they're watching. McCloskey's defence relies on reflexes. Those reflexes are starting to just dampen a bit, aren't they? And look at the work that he does. Prescott is all covered up and happy to draw him in. This is really patient and precise work from Prescott. It's very impressive stuff from the Colombian. 
we've got this image of him as this one-punch banger, a sort of Julian Jackson for the modern age, if you like. There's a lot more to this fella's game than that, as he slips through a very crude lunge there from McCloskey, as if to prove the point. He's in complete control in there right now, and McCloskey's got to find something to turn this around. Good straight right hand got through. But he paid the price again, gets a left to the body. And this is where he can come a club, and Nick, when he stands in close with Presco, with the, the hands down, his reflexes aren't as good. He doesn't realise he's been hit with good shots. And it's easy to be fooled by some of these cheers, but Prescott's defensive work is really sound. He's picking up so much of this on the gloves and the arms. I mean, credit to McCloskey, he's brave, he's trying to come forward, the crowd liking that, but walks on the punches. Uh, Al Foster having a little word. Talk to both of them there. Body shot for McCloskey. Right on the bell, though, but it was another good round for Prescott. Prize fighter returns to York Hall. Eight men in one knockout night of light middleweight boxing. With former world champion Takaloo topping the bill. Prize fighter, the light middleweights. Thursday, 8 p.m. Sky Sports HD1. Got a full over. Come on. Keep 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 It's not quite panic stations in that corner. But that is not a happy ship. And really. We're seeing the exact opposite of what we expected. If you'd have said going into round eight that one of these guys would look like the stylish boxer and the other one going in with crude swinging lunges, you'd have thought it was Prescott with the lunges being outboxed by McCloskey. We're seeing the exact opposite of that right now. Yeah, it's McCloskey with it all to do. It's good boxing from Prescott. who has to take a, a left to the body. Tries it again, McCloskey. I think he's blocked a bit that time. Catches him again with a couple of those long lefts. Prescott's hands just coming down a little bit. Maybe he's just starting to feel tired a little bit. Yeah, McCl McCloskey's jabs work, Nick. So he's starting to get through with that punch now. I was going to say, as the hands drop, the McCloskey jab is starting to get through, Glenn. You're absolutely spot on. He's keeping that left hand really low, the Colombian. And McCloskey is finding his range with that jab. Well, he's giving it a real go here, isn't he? You know, there's just a sense of a slight change in the the way Prescott's boxing, that maybe he's starting to feel the pace, hands coming down. Well, we have seen it in the past, he does slow the longer a fight goes. Who knows if McCloskey can maintain a really fast tempo here. He could start to run out of steam. Well, if he can do that, McCloskey will be a tremendous comeback. I think it's, 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 it's his best hope, Glenn, isn't it? He's got to just keep the pressure on. Keep him pinned back. Seize the initiative and keep it. It's better this from McCloskey. It is better. It, Prescott starting to miss with punches. It's going to give him a little bit of a glimmer of hope if he can carry this on through the round, because he's doing enough to fiddle and fudge his way through this round. And I think he got caught again there. Almost as if Prescott, though, is taking a bit of a breather for one last push. Or is he running out of steam? We just don't know. Another decent jab lands. And then a good left gets through as well. Well, this is the best part of the fight for McCloskey. 
Things are just starting to turn his way. He's kept the pressure on, he's worked the jab, he's found a few decent lefts off the back of it. And Prescott has probably lost the initiative again. Fascinating battle, this. Well, the sense here at ringside is that the better work has been coming consistently from Prescott. That is backed out by the statistics. McCloskey just not landing enough. And now you're hearing in both, certainly in the, in the Irish corner, they're saying that Prescott is starting to tire. And if McCloskey can find another gear here, there's still time for him to turn this one around. not out of this but he needs to dominate for the rest of this fight and don't forget it's a 10-8 round in the uh, first round because of that rather unfortunate knockdown but McCluskey hunting and closing the gap and getting through and slipping inside those long left jabs but then taking a combination in return as well. And that right hand of Bradis Prescott is still cocked full of venom. Hands have come up a little bit from Prescott. The corners obviously noticed that as well. Told him to sharpen up a little bit. A little bit borderline there. We've seen lower, but Howard Foster has just decided that, you know, enough's enough. We're not going to have any low shots in that, in, in this one. Just maybe a sign that his work is getting more ragged. Because a lot of them have been on target for Prescott. Decent left landed in there from uh, McCloskey as well. So he's got to watch it now, Prescott. He doesn't want a point taken off. Good aggression from the Irishman. I'm not sure how effective it was, though, because Prescott is still sticking to his defensive work. But there's an air of confidence coming into the work of McCloskey. You don't feel these punches are bothering him as much from Prescott, and now he wants to try and get his own on. He doesn't want to be walking into those jabs. I think, Pres I think you're right, I think Prescott is starting to tire a little bit. He'll definitely want to try and keep this at range now if he can, and box his way through. And McCloskey won't have any of that. Good little left hand again. First to the punch, McCloskey, increasingly. Yeah, he's trying to force it. Took a, a left from Prescott, but managed to cover up for the rest of them. Then he's back on the front foot. Definitely got some confidence about him now, the Irishman. But yeah. is that going to be enough to get him back into this? Well, he's winning this round, so starting to just change things around a bit. Well, we haven't seen much from Prescott last couple of rounds. Good left to the body. That seemed to win. Press got a little bit right on the bell. Much better round for the Irishman. These fans know it. This guy's feeling it. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Bring the Irish with a pressure on him. He's, he's ready to go for. You hear me? Irish with a pressure on him. When you back him up, you'll get him. When you back him up, work at him. <laughs> well, it's on the front foot. It's good work from. Paul McCloskey, you can see the corner, you heard him, McGee, he's getting a bit excited, trying to push his man on, looking for body shots, maybe senses himself that Bradis Prescott is tiring in there.
pressure. We got to put pressure. Put punch against single punch. No good deal. Hard and fast. Let's go with those jabs primarily to the head. That's been the key. I'm a little bit surprised that Press could have worked the body so well in the first couple of rounds. He's kind of abandoned that a little bit as he's looked to work the jab and follow through with those big looping right hands. But who's got the strong finish here? This is starting to level off a little bit. Yep, three points up. Prescott with three to go. And, you know, there's a couple of close ones in, so it's still all the fight for. But McCloskey paying for that weak defence there, letting Prescott tee off on him. And I think Prescott's been given a bit of a G up in his corner because he's had a couple of very average rounds. And he's starting to land that left hand with some regularity here. Kluski lands his own south for right. But really, for me, McCluskey can't afford to lose another round. Or it's in the back for Prescott. He's really got to win. I think the corner know that. It's another decent left hand. He's landed some good shots here and a right following up as well. And Prescott working the left of the body. And McCluskey's looking to get in range, struggling a little bit. Now he's got him in a corner. Can he do some damage in there? That did some damage, big right hand. But Prescott still working that left jab. And a big left comes in from the Irishman, and they're both starting to score freely now. Well, it was a good start of this round from Prescott. Because he's come back into it, it's all the fight for still. take advantage decent left again from Prescott we are both landing with punches both trying to get a, a foothold both trying to be the boss in this round I think they both don't it's all a fight for. Tricky round of score. Prescott started it so well. But all the effort and the work rate is coming from McCloskey. I wonder how the three ringside judges are seeing this one. Yep, for me, I think McCloskey just finishing the better. Just a little spring in his step. Pushing Tesco in the back foot. Just looking to do more. Well, three rounds ago. It looked like Prescott was skating this one. Now it looks very, very different. Don't forget the live action continues here on Sky Sports. We're off to Poland at 10 o'clock to see this fella, Vitaly Klitschko, who means business. Thomas Adamek, his opponent. Klitschko defending his WBC heavyweight title. Looking all business, very purposeful. We've been seeing that face for a long time, around about eight years since he took Lennox Lewis ever so close. And since then, he's been the boss, hasn't he? Who's well, the boss here? Yep, yeah, good right hand from McCloskey. For me, Prescott's still ahead, but McCloskey coming right back into this fight. Well, if Glenn's card is to be believed, don't forget that knockdown and the great start for Prescott. The Colombian probably still with his nose in front, but it's getting close as we get down to the last two rounds of what has been a really absorbing eliminator. You know, I am quite impressed the way Paul McCluskey hasn't fallen apart. Early in the fight, things weren't going his way. He stuck to it. Starting to see chinks in the armor of Prescott. And certainly if you're impressed with the work rate of McCloskey. 
You could be making a case for him. Having his nose in front here. And still he pushes forward and lands a right hand and another. And Prescott is significantly slower now. These last three rounds have not been good for him. This one's not going well for him either. No, it's quite obvious. You can tell who the man at home is. The crowd getting behind McCloskey. It's going McCloskey's way. He's pulling this back. It's a gutsy, brave effort. And Prescott knows he's got to find something. But he's hit McCloskey with everything he's got. And the Irishman has stood there and said, is that it? There was that one little wobble. And he recovered from that very quickly. And that's all Prescott's been able to do. In terms of really hurting his man. Still, McCloskey pushing forward, and Prescott definitely not as good on the back foot, is he? It's ragged, isn't it? Yeah, it's ragged. It's tired. It's the occasional little flurry from the Colombian, and that's it. He's looking for somewhere to go. And McCloskey's got him in his sights, and he's just outworking and out-hustling him. And I really hate that phrase, who wants it more? But it actually seems to be coming down to that. McCloskey's hunger is just burning away there. And it could win him this fight. But if you just look at the two, the physical presence, it's McCloskey who looks the boss in there, doesn't he? He's the one that's trying to bully Prescott around the ring. Well, certainly for the last four rounds, walks onto the left, but no power there. The snap's gone. And he's pinned in a corner. And this time the punches do get through. And another right hand lands. Another good round for the home camp. One of the judges have you in front. What did you do? Work this last one. You're going to win this round. You worked hard this one. Work this last one. Oh, I'm sorry, Palace. Work this last one. One more round. One more round, son. One more round, son. Well, it has closed right up, hasn't it? Look at that. McCloskey has pulled that deficit right back over these last four rounds. And you heard John Breen there. I think if I caught him correctly, he was saying at least one of these judges has got McCloskey in front. That, of course, completely unofficial. Somebody might have been trying to look over somebody's shoulder. But there's no question the way he's fought over these last four rounds. He's been the aggressor, he's been hungrier, he's been busier. He's won the last four rounds. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot will depend on that opening round. Did the judges give it a 10-8? 10-9, that could pull a round back for Maslowski. The crowd think it's right there. I think this fight's all for the taking. It really is. Maslowski whipping this crowd up as if they need it. The last round. And there's a bit of tape come loose on Maslowski's left glove. Well, Prescott might be grateful of that. He's the one that's... Uh, Tired in these late stages. Well, I'm not sure this is the fight any of us quite expected. In many ways, it's surpassed expectations. Fortunes have ebbed and flowed. You've seen one guy on top, only for the other guy to come back and assert his authority. But these last few rounds have been all Paul McCloskey. Has he done enough? to book himself a title fight with Marcos Maidana. And now we've got some tape problems with the other glove. Well, that's incredible. Well, again, that rest fight. The crowd's thinking it's going to help Prescott. Maybe they're playing for time. Well, time running out for these two fellas. And McCloskey fighting as if he knows he has to put on the grandstand finish. And I'm not sure that Prescott can lose five rounds in a row and expect to get this decision. And he's got to find something too. But 
Paul McCloskey is just steamrolling through this guy. Who would have believed it? Sinks a left hand into the body. Prescott can't find a reply. Then he lands a right hand. That one shook him up, but McCloskey looks and grins and says, no, not going anywhere. Well, I don't think Dredis Prescott's ever stopped anybody in the late rounds. McCloskey is going to be doing everything to win this and try and stop him. But it's been a great fight back for Paul McCloskey and the crowd know it. He's certainly outboxing him, outpunching him here. He really has turned this around. And Prescott finds a right hand, but his success is few and far between. And once he abandoned the jab, Prescott's looked second best in this fight. Mikulski letting the punches go, letting the hooks. Last minute, has he done enough, Glenn, to turn this around? Well, he's certainly done enough to come very close. I think a lot could depend on that opening round, whether it's 10-9 or 10-8, as to whether McCloskey gets this. It's going to be really close. It's going to be controversial as well, I'm sure, because the loser of this one is going to be bitterly disappointed. There's very little in it. And you just hope that that knockdown in the first round is not going to be the difference maker. Looking a little bit heavy on his legs there in the last few seconds. McCloskey, can Prescott find something yet? He's in a bit of trouble here, the Irishman. I think he's going to be OK. I think he's going to get through it. A good 20-second burst to finish the round off for Prescott for his McCloskey's round. Prescott thinks he's won. McCloskey can hardly stand. He can't even raise his arms in celebration. But which way has this one gone? After eight, you'd have said Prescott for certain. Now, who knows? Did he do enough work early, the Colombian? Did he put enough points in the bank? Or did John Breen and his charge here do enough to turn things upside down? Well, it was a great start of the fight for Prescott, but didn't he do well, McCloskey, coming back, showing great determination, great character. You've got to feel for the loser, whoever it is. What a battle. But it started off and things started pretty bad. But Paul McCloskey, Prescott looked good. There was a controversial knockdown, which could decide a lot. But Prescott doing nothing wrong. Good straight punches, the right hand landing and busting that nose and giving him damage. Getting the odd success, McCloskey. But things were just going from bad to worse as Prescott landing with good right hands. Time and time again he got through and it looked as if Prescott just had the measure of McCloskey and the defences were going to let him down. Legs were staggered in the seventh. The eighth was a, a similar story. But just then, McCloskey started to change things around. The crowd got behind him. But the key was Prescott started the tail. Hands came down, and from that moment on, Paul McCloskey went from strength to strength, kept going, took Prescott on the back foot, kept the punches going in, right at the very end. Good start of the round from McCloskey, and a 20-second finish from Prescott, but it's all in the balance. But the future of two brave and committed boxers is now in the hands of judges from England, France and Italy. It's down to them. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the score totals. Judge Jean-Louis Legrand scores the contest 114 to 113.
Judge Terry O'Connor scores the contest 115 to 113. Judge Giuseppe Quattaroni scores the contest 114 to 113. Your winner, by way of unanimous decision of this eliminator for the WBA light welterweight title, Paul He's got Didi Markowski. He turned it around. What a performance from Paul McCloskey. What toughness, character, determination. When it looked all over, it looked like he didn't get a, he couldn't get a win. He turned it around in front of his own fans and pulled out a, a terrific victory. And I tell you what, Glenn, what was really significant, no complaints at all from the Prescott camp. He's already left the ring on his way back to his dressing room, obviously disappointed, but there were no histrionics no reaction at all they just accepted the decision great great fight terrific night of boxing once again for northern ireland